19.6 kilo so it is ridiculously heavy hello my friends welcome to the channel today we'll be pulling apart my computer and i will show you how i like to disassemble my computer so i don't break anything like we'll pull it apart completely and this would be a good guide if you need to take any other components from your computer without breaking it so stay tuned for this video and also in the second part of this video we will be putting it back together in another case so basically we're just going to be transferring all the components from one computer to another computer without further ado let's get started and if you're new to the channel please subscribe if you like this video and find it helpful give it a like and if you have any comments or questions also leave in the comment section below okay let's get started Okay, so the first thing we want to do, we want to shut off the computer and unplug it from the electrical outlet. And of course, if it's been running for some time, it might be still hot. So make sure you wait for a little bit of time, like 10 minutes before it cools down. And then you can work on it without any issues. You know, you're not going to burn yourself. So there we go. It's already off. I can turn off the monitor and we can start disassembling, taking the components out and put it in a new case later. See, it's all underneath, so I'm basically gonna unplug everything but the light, so there's still light in the room. There we go. Everything is turned off. Let's go ahead and unplug all the cables, like the keyboard, the HDMI cable, so that we don't pull it together. Actually, this is a a display port cable it's not HDMI and then we also have some USB cables we'll just unplug them all then we have the Ethernet cable just so we don't pull anything with it this is just the Wi-Fi now we can pull this system block out as you can see it's pretty pretty dark here and it's pretty hard to get through to and yeah so it will be better if we put it on the desk or on a table and it will be a lot easier to work like this give it a little bit more room and this case that I got is really heavy actually because it's a full tower and yes it is very heavy <laughs> so it is not very friendly to carry around but you can fit a lot of stuff in this case and this is why I decided to buy this case because it has a lot of room, it's a full tower so you can fit a lot of components and it has a lot of air inside so there's no problem with cooling in this case and I wanted to put a 360 uh, water cooler in it so yeah. And as you can see the weight for this case is 19.6 kilo so this is really heavy, it's really heavy to carry around and um, yeah, so we're gonna take all the components and put it in a different case. Very heavy, you need like two hands to put it up, like oh man. This is a very huge case. So it is ridiculously heavy but the good thing about this case that it has a massive amount of room inside and you can actually put in a lot of components inside plus you can also have a lot of air inside too so that you can put a lot of fans inside because it has a lot of room plus you have a lot of airflow you get the airflow coming from the front then it can be exhausted through the top through the bottom you can suck air through the side here it can be exhausted through the back so there's tons of air inside which is good because cooling down your PC is the most important part of longevity because once it gets hot the heat is like devastating to any PC components so make sure you have enough cooling capacity for for your components and having a bigger case is a big improvement so yeah let's go ahead and pull out this side panel first and it's got some some screws here so it's easy to pull it apart you don't need a screwdriver though we're probably gonna need a screwdriver to take out the motherboard so as you can see this is the side panel with the acrylic glass it has vents on the side here and there is no filter here it's just uh, metal vents and this is better to have it like this than having the whole panel covered with glass because it has some surface that actually can 
get air through. As you can see, there's quite a bit of room here. You can put another graphic card, but nowadays it's not very popular to have two graphic cards because the graphic cards have become so powerful that having two graphic cards in one computer is not economically feasible to have two graphics cards because most users don't need it unless you're building like a super professional rig for editing or some 3D rendering, then you might benefit from having two graphics cards. But in this case, most people don't need it. So this case, I would say it's a little bit overkill for what components I got here. But the main reason I wanted to put a 360 fan on the top here, then has a water-cooled graphics card as well. So, yep. Okay, let's go ahead and pull it apart. So it's probably better if we put it on its side. This way we can access all the components a lot easier and will be easier to see so let's just get the camera here closer well let's first pull out the RAM actually let's first pull out the graphic card because it's taking a lot of room and then it will be easier to access to this to the RAM then we can pull this top fan off and then we can pull out the power supply and then at the last piece we're gonna pull out the motherboard and before you start make sure you discharge all the static electricity that might be on the tips of your fingers this way you're not going to short any of the external components. First we're going to remove the, this radiator for the graphic card and then we're going to take out the whole graphic card out. It's got a pretty cool design of air filters on the bottom. As you can see it's got two air filters, we're just going to remove this first one. It protects it from excessive dust getting inside the case and then we're going to access to the four screws that are located on the bottom. Those screws are holding this graphic card radiator, so we're just going to remove those. There we go, it's done, so the radiator is free. So remove the power connector from the graphic card. This one's got a 12-pin connector, plus there is one for the fan for the cooler. So this one's got like a 14-pin connector. And for this one, we just can use the, you can just unscrew the some screws. You don't even need a screwdriver. Then there is a tab on the side here. You just gotta be careful when you pull it out. Make sure to release that tab. It's located right over here. It's actually covering with the graphic card. You can see this gray tab. So when you pull out the graphic card, make sure to press on that tab at the same time. Otherwise, you might wreck the slot. So don't, don't just yank on it or don't pull it too hard. Make sure you press on that tab. And then at the same time, just evenly pull out the card. Don't twist it, don't pull it to the side. You just gotta lift it straight up. We got all the connectors unplugged. We got this radiator unscrewed, but most graphic cards, they don't have water cooling, so you don't have to worry about this water cooling. Pull it out, there we go. It's got a little bit of dust on top here, but it's no big problem. And then pull out this cooling fan as well. It's amazing this case is so big but yet it's still hard to pull everything out so there we go we got the graphic card out so this particular card that I got is EVGA GeForce GTX 980 Ti and that's a hybrid because it has a water cooling I really like it it's a great card but nowadays it's pretty much outdated even the cheapest 3060 graphics card is way faster than the 980 Ti, but yet it works good, so might as well let it work. I still have all the plugs and rubber covers for this graphic card when I bought it, so I will put them back, because if you're transporting it, you wanna make sure that this PCIe connector is not gonna get any damage, because this is probably one of the most important parts, and yeah, it comes with this uh, rubber cover. So we'll just put it back on. This way it won't get damaged or mostly it won't get scratched. I won't say it can get damaged, it's not going to protect it from damaging, but it will definitely protect it from scratching. And it also comes with all the plugs for the HDMI and display ports, so we can put those back as well. All right, there we go. So as you can see, I have plugged all the ports on the rear of the card. This way it's not going to get anything inside there and it won't damage the ports. Next, let's go ahead and disconnect all the SATA cables and the power cables to the SSD drives. 
Then we can go ahead and remove the rim. All you have to do just unlatch the tabs on one side and then you can pull the rim out. As you can see, this is a DDR4 rib jaw 4. Pretty good memory. I got four sticks of it, eight gigabyte each, so 32 gigabyte in total. So let's go ahead and remove all the memory. This water cooling system is in the way, but we still can get to it. There we go. So this is the last memory module. So that's basically everything we have on the motherboard. Next, let's go ahead and disconnect all the SATA cables, all power cables to the motherboard, all USB 3.0 and all other cables. Then we can also get the SSD out. As you can see, this is a SanDisk Extreme Pro. And this specific design I like because you can remove these trays from the case pretty easy and they slide in and out. And then you can just unscrew this bolt on the bottom and then you can easily remove the SSD drive. So next, let's go ahead and remove the top fan. So we're going to have to remove the plastic cover from the top. As you can see, I got it already removed. Then we're going to take the dust filter out. And as you can see, there are a few screws holding the top radiator to the case. So we're going to have to remove all the screws. Once all the screws are removed, the radiator is free. We can put it on the side. And now we're going to have to disconnect the pump part from the CPU. There are four screws, one on each corner. And then you just need to twist the locking mechanism and you can remove it after. Now we have removed every single component from the motherboard. So now it's time to remove the motherboard itself. But before we do that, we need to disconnect a few connectors on the bottom of the motherboard. As you can see, there are a few connectors on the bottom. There's like HD audio. There is USB 2.0 connector. There are some LED light. There is a connector for the power button and for the reset button. So we're going to have to remove all those before we remove the motherboard and by the way we can leave the nvme ssd drive on the motherboard because it's not going to affect the transportation and we can just leave it in its place there we go so as you can see everything is removed all the wires are removed all the components are removed so now we're going to have to take the screws out and remove the motherboard okay so after the last screw is removed we can remove the motherboard from the case and the last thing we're going to have to do is to remove the power supply this is going to be our last component to remove. And because this is a modular power supply, I'm just going to remove all the cables first. And then I'm going to unscrew four screws on the back and remove the power supply. Okay, so the power supply is free as well. Let's go ahead and remove it. As you can see, this is the EVGA 650P2 Supernova. This is 80 plus platinum. So this is a really good power supply. I really like it. Works good for the configuration that I got seems to be working really great and this power supply is seven years old and, and it works flawlessly so i really like that and it's also very power efficient as well because this is a platinum so if you're looking to get a power supply sometimes it's better to pay a little bit extra to get a nice power supply that will supply proper voltage to all your pc components because a lot of time people neglect with power supply, they think it's not very important and you can get an expensive graphic card, expensive CPU, but get a cheap power supply. Well, I don't really recommend doing that because electrical supply is very important and it's supposed to be precise and the voltage is supposed to be precise. Otherwise, it could even damage your expensive components. So yeah, definitely don't cheap out on the power supply. And as you can see, it also has an eco mode. In case you want to save even more energy, for example, if you don't need all 650 watt, you can set it into the eco mode and then it will consume even less power. There you have it, guys. So all the components are removed from this PC. This is what I wanted to show you in this video, how to remove components from your PC without breaking them. So I hope you find this video helpful and you like it. If you like this video, please support it with your like. Also, please subscribe to the channel for more interesting, helpful videos. I appreciate it very much. This helps me a lot to grow my channel. And if you have any questions, comments, drop them down in the comment section below. I'll be really happy to help you if I can. And by the way, in the next video, we're going to be putting all these components into the new case. So you're going to see how all these components look in the new case and how it's going to be assembled. So stay tuned. This video is going to be coming out soon. I hope you will like it. It's going to be in the mid tower, so it's going to be less space. But that design is really good. So I'm gonna, you're going to see that case pretty soon. I'm also going to do a quick review about that case as well. This is a deep cool matrix 55 mesh, really nice casing, but you're going to see that in the next video. But this is it for now. I hope you have a nice day. See you soon. Bye-bye.